Sarah, thanks for holding there as we talk about tomorrow's rally in Rockville, because well, you've got some pretty big breaking news here with regard to Spygate. That's right. And tomorrow's rally, Larry, is going to be very important. But there was huge news today uh, because uh, the Department of Justice is apparently uh, turned down uh, McCabe's lawyers from moving forward. They're basically going to move forward with a a looks like a prosecution of Andrew McCabe. And I was just on the phone with uh, somebody who is very familiar with this decision. And they said that the line prosecutors, as well as attorney uh, Jesse Liu, have decided to move forward with this. Um, McCabe's team has appealed. They appealed it to the deputy attorney general, um, and the deputy attorney general rejected that appeal today. So that means they're more than likely moving forward with some sort of indictment. I asked them to say what the next part of the process was, um, if anybody knew what was going on, what the next steps would be. Uh, they, I was told by several sources that they couldn't discuss that any further. What they did say was that McCabe had had multiple meetings with line prosecutors at the uh, Department of Defense, I mean at the Department of Justice, and uh, that when, and they also met uh, several times with, with Jesse Liu. They said it was extraordinary but an appropriate process uh, for him to do so. They wanted to give them all the opportunity uh, to discuss or to try to appeal this decision. Um, Michael Bromwich, who is the attorney for Andrew McCabe, who is, a, of course, the former deputy uh, assistant at the FBI, uh, was very disappointed. Um, uh, apparently, uh, this goes back to the April 13th release of the Department of Justice Inspector General's report on him for Michael Horowitz. Now, uh, 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 Jesse Liu, of course, is the U.S. Attorney for the District of Columbia. So uh, whatever Correct. charges are brought against Andrew McCabe, the former second in command at the FBI under Barack Obama and under James Comey, those would be a completely separate to the investigation from U.S. Attorney in Connecticut, John Durham, right? That's absolutely true. This is separate. This is going to focus mainly, as I was told by sources, mainly on the Inspector General's report. And remember, that Inspector General's report said that Andrew McCabe lacked candor, including under oath on multiple occasions, uh, in connection with describing his role as far as leaking information to the Wall Street Journal. Uh, He lied under oath multiple times. And apparently, this is exactly what they're going after him on, uh, lying under oath and leaking uh, information on an ongoing investigation to uh, media, and, to the Wall Street Journal. And, and uh, when the Justice Department says in this, uh, in this memo to Mr. McCabe that they have rejected their appeal, what does that mean exactly? Right. When, when they say appeal, obviously appeal is a, is, a, um, is a legal term where you try to appeal a judgment against you at an appellate court. Uh, by, th- what they mean is they were trying to talk the Justice Department out of charging him, right? That's exactly it. So the Justice Department uh, made a decision. They wanted to move forward. Uh, Michael Bromwich, uh, Andrew McCabe's attorney, decided to appeal that decision. They gave him, apparently, according to the sources that I've spoken with, multiple meetings with the line prosecutors involved in the case, as well as with Jesse Liu. Uh, and uh, they decided uh, that, in the end, uh, the, de- uh, the deputy attorney general decided to reject. And I use that word strongly. That was the word uh, that, that was brought forth to me by a person familiar with this. They said they rejected the appeal which means uh, what happens next? That was the question that I had, and yeah. I was told they could. Uh, they had to decline to answer what the next steps would be until they actually went forward with them. We're speaking with Sarah. I'm, I'm assuming, a, a, de- de- depending on what happens, but I believe, according to the sources that I've spoken with, it looks like they will move forward with an indictment. Uh, we're speaking with Sarah Carter. She is Fox News contributor, and we're talking about this is now uh, bro- Fox News is running with this as well, that uh, the Justice Department will be uh, fo- moving forward with charges against former FBI second-in-command Andrew McCabe, uh, James Comey's uh, right-hand man there, during the uh, investigation. And can you tell me, and I, I know that your sources are giving you as much as you can give, and you probably know more than you can say, Sarah, um, but... <laughs> But uh, are, they, are, are, the, are the charges specifically about leaking, or is it about lying about the leaks? I believe it's about both. It's going to encompass the entire Inspector General's report. 
So if, if you just go back to that report last year that was released in April, it was the report that led to then Attorney General Jeff Sessions uh, pushing for uh, McCabe's removal and firing him. Right. That is the report that they're basing this decision on. But you made a really good point, Larry. There is an ongoing investigation by a Connecticut attorney, uh, John Durham, and that is completely separate from what we're seeing here. So if McCabe uh, is also being investigated in, in the very beginning of this uh, FBI probe into President Trump and that the now debunked uh, conspiracy theory that, uh, that they conspired with Russia. So right now there are two separate investigations ongoing. It looks like this one's going to move forward. Uh, with some legal action against McCabe. And what could be very interesting uh, for those of us watching Sarah Carter of this investigation into the leaks is, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, uh, Mr. McCabe has claimed that he was given permission by then FBI Director James Comey, and that that's his alibi, basically. He's saying, oh, I, I didn't do anything wrong because Comey said I could do it, and Comey has said, no, that's not true. So they're actually at odds with each other on this one. Yeah, they are at odds with each other on this. And what's going to be very interesting is we have to ask ourselves, how much information does McCabe actually have? And is he going to turn on his former boss um, with regards to the ongoing investigation to John Durham? So uh, it seems as though for the last year, a lot of people have been throwing people under the bus with regard to these two investigations. So if, for example, the team right now at the Department of Justice, these prosecutors are questioning McCabe, asking him about uh, a series of things. It wouldn't surprise me that if John Durham's team is also not asking a series of questions, trying to figure out what was the beginning of the Russia investigation, because this is what they want to find out. Why did you move forward with this? What happened? How were the players operating during that time at the very beginning of this Russia investigation in 2016 into President Trump's campaign? And there's going to be a lot of questions that need to be answered. They're going to want to look at how many times people were unmasked. Were they, what phone uh, calls were they tapping? Were they listening to? Who were they watching? Um, they're going to definitely ask about Stefan Halper, about Joseph Mitzud. We know that John Durham's been overseas. These were the, the apparent spies that were operating for the FBI. And so there's a lot of questions here that need to be answered. But this is a huge huge step. There were a lot of people that were doubting that anybody would be prosecuted. Yep. I know a lot of people were very disappointed with uh, the decision with Comey, but as uh, you know, the Department of Justice stated and those that were aware of what was going on there, they said this just that case was just not strong enough and they were looking at a lot more potential crimes uh, than just uh, what they were going after Comey for at the time. So. Fascinating. And and by the and again, I know that they haven't been specific with the memos. I know they haven't been specific with you yet about the charges that uh, might be pending here against Andrew McCabe, uh, Sarah Carter. However, uh, if, it is a, if it is about the leaks or if it's about the lying of, uh, on the leaks, uh, do we have any understanding of what the, the criminal penalty might be for those sorts of I mean, we certainly saw how they treated the likes of George Papadopoulos and, uh, and Lieutenant General Mike Flynn uh, for what appeared to be pretty minor infractions with regard to false uh, information. Well, and I think that's very important. You brought up a very important point, Larry. I mean, a lot of people that I've spoken with, you know, including, you know, I've interviewed Sydney Powell. She's defending Michael Flynn right now in this case. And, and there may be a chance that his case gets thrown out altogether based on the Brady material that she's requesting. And I've been covering that story. And that was the exculpatory information that the government did not include during the case or prior to the case getting started before he made his plea, his guilty plea, which was, uh, was one count of, of lying, which even the FBI uh, dismisses. Uh, we saw that with Comey's testimony, that he wasn't actually lying when he met with the FBI agents, Peter Strzok and Joe Pienka. But you brought up a very important point. He could look at five years or more, um, depending on what they charge him with. I, you know, I don't want to jump the gun here. I yeah. think it's going to be up to the Department of Justice, and I'm sure an announcement will be forthcoming in the next days or at maximum a week but something is definitely going to develop uh very soon within the next seven days and we'll we'll definitely see what charges or what they're laying out as far as charges for any particular indictment on mccabe i think this is a really huge deal i mean mccabe just got a job 
as a contributor at CNN. It's going to be interesting to see how that plays out, too. Oh, uh, yes. I mean, we'll see and then keep. <laughs> he's supposed to be a consul- uh, an on-air contributor to discuss issues with the Trump administration and, and uh, FBI and D- Department of Justice issues. If he's actually under indictment with the Justice Department, would CNN keep him as an expert analyst? We'll have to wait and see because, look, he violated FBI policy. Why would you have somebody as a contributor who actually violated the policy and not only violated the policy but violated the law and actually lied under oath? I mean, this is what he is being accused of by the inspector general who did numerous, numerous interviews with him. Uh, so this is this is very important. This is why it's such an important development. I think the American people definitely are are at least for the people that have been following this story, maybe feel a sense of relief and feel like they're not the only person, you know, that are actually that are actually getting targeted are those in the in the Trump administration or former Trump administration officials. But now we're seeing some action on this front, which is what has been under investigation now for about three years with Congress and, of course, John Solomon and I and everyone else. You betcha. Well, listen, this is a huge development in this story. Uh, Thank you for bringing it to us, Sarah Carter, very much. Thanks for calling and thanks for checking in. That's Sarah Carter.